Welcome back to Bogey Lanes in East Brookfield, Massachusetts for another match from the Western New England Pro Tour event. This is the quarterfinals, and in this match, Rich Bober on lane 7 is going to be taking on Jeff Walsh on lane 8. Rich Bober was the number 5 seed in qualifying, and then in the first round, he defeated number four seed Dave Godwin and that round actually went to two strings because they tied in the first game so they uh, had to bowl another one so Rich Bober is taking on the number three seed Jeff Walsh the winner of this match takes on Peter Pereira and finally uh, the top seed Jim Bayot Both guys begin with nine. Jeff Walsh on the head pin in the second box. Leaves a diamond two, four, five, eight. Couple of pieces of wood out front, and that first one is flattening out. Let's see what it'll do. Doesn't doesn't get the eight pin. He, he may have uh, gone a little bit further toward the left end than he wanted to, so the ball was sort of deflected further left, and it didn't go back and get the eight. That was a tricky piece of wood. Ten box for Jeff Walsh and a nine for Rich Bober. So Jeff lead by one through two boxes. Third box, Jeff with a half Worcester right. Rich Bober with a strike, and that's, uh, here's, here's another look at it. Sort of a mixer, and strike with the orange pin. I don't know if Rich wins a candy bar for that, but uh, that will enable him to take the lead over Jeff. Jeff goes through the, uh, the bunny hole, so he's gonna need Need an out here, especially against the strike by Rich Bober. And just a five, so Rich with 24, or uh, Jeff Walsh with 24 through the third. Rich Bober with 28 plus the strike fill. Jeff bounces back with a nine drop. <clears throat> He's got the 10 pin. Some wood well out front that could be, uh, could be difficult. And it proves to be uh, a roadblock. He actually, he went high on that, which is sort of in an attempt to drive that first pin back into the corner. And unfortunately, it went in front of the 10 pin, didn't take it out. And that'll be a nine box, that third ball slipped off into the gutter. So Jeff with 33 through the fourth, Rich Bober with nine on the strike and nine in the box. So he has a 13 pin lead now, 46 to 33. Jeff with another nine drop in the other corner pin, the seven. And Rich Bober, second straight box, he's had a nice one three pocket hit but had a split to show for it. And Jeff, this time he had a clear shot at the seven but he went to the right of it. So he'll be open again in the fifth. Now there's a spare by Rich Bober. So through halfway through the match, Rich Bober has a lead of 13 pins plus the spare fill. They switch lanes and Rich goes over to lane eight. Jeff finishes on lane seven. Wow, another good ball by Rich Bober. And another split. He's got the four and six with nothing on the deck. That is a, uh, an eight fill on the spare, so that's the, uh, the good news. But the bad news is really tough shot, almost impossible. And there was a spare by Jeff Walsh after uh, Missing a couple of singles, he makes a tough one. 5-10 split. Utilizing the wood behind the 5-pin uh, to get that ball to go over into the 10-pin. 
So that is a badly needed spare for Jeff Walsh in the sixth box. And Rich Bober trying for two orange pin strikes in one game, and he almost gets it. <coughs> he gets everything but the eight pin. Jeff Walsh with a seven drop, 60 through the sixth. He still trails by 13. And Rich Bober with a spare in the seventh. Jeff Walsh trying to get something to come off the wall to get the five pin. But that four, five, seven is one of the most difficult of the uh, the common leaves in candle pinball. It's very, very difficult to get anything to get to come off and get the five pin. Rich with an eight drop. So he now leads by 22. 91 to 69 through seven. <coughs> He's got the seven and eight with a piece of wood out way out front. Tries to get to cover it, but he's not able to get the seven pin. That'll be a ten for Rich. And a ten also for Jeff. So with two boxes to go, it is still a twenty-two pin lead for Rich Bober, 101 to 79. Jeff Walsh has, needs two marks and also uh, need, need to get a little bit of help unless he can throw a double. And that's going to be tough. He's got the Kaliri, the infamous uh, shot with the four horsemen and the inboard pin. One, two, four, seven, nine. And that goes. That comes off the wall. Actually, the four pin comes uh, hits the seven and then comes off the wall and goes over to get the uh, goes over to get the nine and well you'll see in replay that ball hits the four pin into the seven and and it slides off the wall and topples the nine and that was a mandatory spare for Jeff Walsh at this point uh, Rich Bober left a couple of pins on the deck so it's down to a 19 pin lead minus the fill and the fill is 10 as Jeff Walsh carries that really full hit for a strike in the 10th. So through 9, it's a 20 pin lead, 109 to 99. Rich Bober filling out the 10th box. And that is just an 8, so he has a 117 to finish. That means that Jeff Walsh will need 8 to tie, 9 to win on the strike bill. And he's got 5 on the first ball. So, going down to the last ball, anything could happen here. He needs three of these pins to tie, four to win. And he's got four. He missed the object pin, but got some nice sidewall action to uh, cover the five. Here's another look at it. That six pin goes hard off the sidewall, comes over to get the five pin, and Jeff is happy about that. That might be somewhat sarcastic applause because he missed the object, but in any event... That is a, uh, an excellent comeback there to uh, make up 20, 22 pins in the last two boxes. And Jeff Walsh defeats Rich Bober by one pin.